Chopper 5 live over Napa County where thick smoke is hampering efforts to attack the glass fire from the air. And you can see pockets of uh, smoke coming up there. Intense fire down below. Uh, there is at least some good news to report, however. About two hours ago, Cal Fire eased evacuation orders in the Santa Rosa area as the flames pushed north and to the east. But that is bad news. On the Napa County side of this thing, mandatory evacuations have been extended to the entire community of Angwin. About 4,000 people live there. It is also home to Pacific Union College and several wineries. Are the latest numbers right now? At least 112 buildings have burned so far. 80 of them were private homes. The fire now covers about 43,000 acres across Napa and Sonoma counties. That's the area about the size of Stockton. And the entire city of Calistoga is a ghost town. Its residents among 68,000 evacuees. KPIX 5's Don Ford is seven miles to the east of Calistoga in Angwin, with some of the people who are staying behind. Here, just outside White Cottage Road in Angwin, the city is still being threatened by fire. But now the city itself is under mandatory evacuations. Helicopters are making run after run, filling their buckets and returning to the rough terrain between Calistoga and Angwin. The fire is deep in the hills. Uh, it's a tough firefight there. Uh, we are trying to establish some uh, old uh, control lines that we've used in the past. Uh, some of that we uh, were met with without success, unfortunately. Uh, so we've had to uh, just take a step back and, uh, and reconnoiter that and, and, uh, and establish some new lines. Early this morning, folks in Angwin were told to get out, leave town at once. Many neighborhoods now look like ghost towns, streets deserted. Some folks left sprinklers running on their roofs. Many mailboxes are tagged to let first responders know the house is empty, but not everyone left. Dan and Dave decided to stay. How long are you hang, hanging out? I don't know. We'll see. If I see flames, I'm out of here, but until then, I'm just going to hang out probably. They are watching the smoke get closer, watching helicopters. They are not alone. You guys got water? Britton Bach Perfect. was born here. He knows everyone, says there are about 50 people still in Angwin. He and his friend Dave. Hi, Heather, I'm okay. Are making the rounds helping folks who are choosing to stay behind. Stop by and make sure they're safe. You know, tell them what I've seen up on the mountain and, you know, if, to be ready is the biggest thing. The sheriffs are behind too, patrolling the streets. In Angwin, Don Ford, KPIX 5. As we mentioned, uh, some evacuation orders along the western flank of this fire have been lifted or downgraded at this hour. Eastern Santa Rosa is no longer under a warning, and orders have been reduced to warnings for the Summerfield and Spring Lake neighborhoods, as well as the Middle Rincon and Skyhawk areas. But for some people in those communities, the good news comes too late. This video shot this morning along Mountain Hawk Drive in the Skyhawk neighborhood where several homes were destroyed. And hazy skies over the South Bay today because of those fires. This was a view from Chopper 5. And check out the time lapse at the Bay Bridge. Smoky sunrise this morning. But the welcome news for firefighters is a break from the winds. Here's Chief Meteorologist Paul Hagan. Paul? Yeah, the wind is still consistent, but it is much calmer than it was over the weekend and early yesterday morning. And that wind now has an onshore component to it. So you can see the wind. If you just follow the streamlines here, these kind of ghostly lines moving around, indicating the wind flow. It's funneling through the Golden Gate and then down into the Santa Clara Valley, but also northward into the Napa and Sonoma Valleys. And the North Bay has some of the lightest winds on the map. Current wind speeds are around 10 to 12 miles an hour and fire crews can adjust for that as long as it's that consistent direction. Good news also, relative humidity levels quite a bit higher than they were over the weekend, but lower levels as you head to the north of Napa and to the east of Santa Rosa. So those numbers in the 40s and 50s, but in the immediate vicinity of the glass complex, those relative humidity levels have been in the 30s for most of the day. Not as bad as it was, but still not as high as we would like to see it. It will go up overnight. Air quality is the worst immediately downwind of the glass complex, and some of that smoke has been drifting down into the Tri Valley. Inland portions of the East Bay definitely have reduced air quality compared to other parts of the Bay Area. But that smoke is going to be a concern for the next several days. The spare of the air alert continues the rest of the week, and we have to worry about more record heat headed our way. I'll track that coming up in just a few minutes.
All right, Paul, thank you for that. The blaze is also having a huge impact on local attractions. KPIX 5's John Ramos uh, reports how even wineries that were spared by the fire are taking a big hit. Some of the wineries along Silverado Trail suffered only minor losses, like these solar panels bordering the burned hillside. But farther up the road, Fairwinds Estate Winery has been devastated. The tasting room, bottling operation, and fermentation tanks were all under the same roof, and now the wines stored in these barrels appear to be a total loss. The fire also had its way with Hourglass Winery. The 160-year-old residence that served as a welcome center for guests has been leveled. It also melted the plastic roof over the tanks, probably destroying the 2020 vintage. But owner Jeff Smith says because last year's wine was protected in an underground cave, the business will at least have some revenue this year. It sounds like winemaking is not for the faint of heart these days. I don't think winemaking has ever been for the faint of heart, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but even wineries that escaped the fire are still feeling the pinch. Road closures, power outages, and foul air have killed the tourist trade for now, which not only hurts wine sales, but every other hospitality business. Ed Brown was buying gas for the generator at his bed and breakfast that has been without power for 36 hours. So it's screwing with our business big time. And we're losing uh, customers left and right. We lost them to COVID. Now we're losing them to the fires. It's tough times. Yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, you stack a few of these on top of each other and it starts to have a psychological effect. But, you know, we're an incredibly resilient community. Eventually, the air will clear and blackened hillsides will be green again, and the tourists will return. And those who stayed to rebuild will be rewarded for not being faint of heart. In Napa Valley, John Ramos, KPIX 5. And there is a briefing on the grass fire that's happening right now. Yeah, we expect to hear from Sonoma County Cal Fire officials. Let's listen in right now. The priorities for today were a significant uh, portion of line to be cut between the Gray Pine Trail and Bald Mountain in the Sugarloaf State Park, uh, as that line has to hold because if it doesn't, uh, we're going to have to fall back to uh, the Oakville grade on the Napa County side and Trinity Road on the Sonoma County side, and we don't want to give up that much land and the structures in between those two control lines. So that was our priority, is our priority for today. Uh, followed closely behind by Calistoga Road on the other side of the fire uh, to make sure that we don't lose the line that we have over there to keep the fire out of uh, the greater Rincon Valley and Santa Rosa, City of Santa Rosa area as weather conditions change. Uh, we did get the National Guard helicopters that came into the fire area today. Uh, unfortunately, the visibility on the west zone of the fire didn't support firefighting aircraft, but they were able to sortie on the east side of the fire, uh, working in and around Angwin as the uh, evacuation order was extended to include the entire community of Angwin, and that was where we had the most active fire behavior today. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, for more on the update on the fire and the firefight, uh, we have Santa Rosa Fire Chief Tony Gosner joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for being here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, just to follow up on Ben, I'll tell you that uh, on the Santa Rosa area, so I spent a lot of time in Oakmont and, and the lower Calistoga Road today. Uh, all areas are looking good. Uh, we have many tactical patrols in and out of the area, so lots of movement of fire equipment. Uh, in that area, which is great to see. Um, and their, their main job is to uh, put out any hot spots, uh, check around structures, make sure that we don't have secondary ignitions uh, of any residences moving forward. Uh, Annadale's looking good. It is burning in there, but they are using the, the trails as containment lines and working uh, through that area. I will say that we're, I'm being told and hopefully Hopefully it changes, but what I'm being told is we will be having a red flag warning this week. So Wednesday and Thursday, we're looking at 100 degree days uh, with some wind and low humidities. Uh, so it's really important that all of us that are out there to really make sure we pick up these hot spots and clean everything up as much as we can before we, we uh, see more heat and wind. 
Um, and that's for the entire, that's going to hit the entire fire area. we got a lot of fire on the ground still, uh, but there's a lot that can still burn. So we are uh, prepared for that. We're preparing for that uh, and acknowledge the, the tough circumstances that we have. Uh, one of the things that we did do today was release uh, evacuation orders to warnings from mostly Calistoga Road uh, west. So most of those folks are able to go home at this point under a warning. I will say there are some properties that still do not have power uh, and PG&E is, is working on that as we speak. Uh, I did go up Los Alamos Road right outside the city. Lots of damage to infrastructure in terms of uh, power poles and uh, utility lines. So there is a lot of work to be done on that front before we can even start thinking about letting anybody get into some of these more remote areas. Lots of crews up there working as we speak, uh, taking down trees and, and replacing poles and removing wire and, and things of that nature. The lower Calistoga Road looks really well as uh, too. And so there's, again, there's hot spots all over. Uh, the sun comes out, the smoke lifts a little bit. And on top of that, you get a little bit of wind and we start seeing these hot spots uh, pop up and, and mulches and landscaping and you know oak trees, things that, that were on fire at one point. So there is a lot of work in and around uh, the city and that's really around the entire fire, wherever there's equipment and they're not actively fighting fire or trying to control uh, fire, they are trying to put down hot spots and, and create containment. Um, with that, I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. It's certainly good news, but there's still um, a lot, a uh, long road to go. So thank you for that update. For more on um, the uh, situation on the front lines, let's turn to Santa Rosa Police Chief Ray Navarro. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so in uh, coordination with CAL FIRE and uh, the Santa Rosa Fire Department, uh, as uh, Chief Gosner has stated, we have lifted certain areas of uh, the warnings and uh, or downgraded some of the warnings and also uh, lifted some of the evacuation orders. Um, if you live within the city limits and you're not sure where those are or what zone that you live in, you can look it up at srcity.org slash evac zones. So uh, continue to monitor that website and you can also go to srcity dot org slash glass fire uh, for um, continued update alert updated alerts on uh, the the fire emergency so the uh, lifted areas include uh, the evacuation warnings for east one east two and east three uh, those have all been lifted um, and are back to normal uh, the uh, areas the evacuation areas uh, that or orders that have been lifted include all of Summerfield, all of Spring Lake, all of Northeast 2, uh, all of Northeast 3 slash Middle Rincon, and then there's portions of Calistoga South and portions of Melita that have been lifted. So be very careful and follow the information that's on our website. Uh, we still have evacuation orders in place for uh, again, portions of Calistoga South, Skyhawk, uh, including everything east of San Ramon and Mountain Hawk Drive. Uh, we also have portions closed in Melita, east of Calistoga Road, uh, north of Melita between Queen Anne and Montgomery, and all areas east of Channel Drive, south of Montgomery Drive. It, it sounds very confusing, but uh, we're trying to get as many people in to the safe areas and keep, the peop keep everybody out of the areas that are still dangerous. Uh, the other zones that are still remain under mandatory evacuation include Calistoga North, Stonebridge, Pythian, Oakmont South, and Oakmont North. You still cannot go back to those particular areas. Uh, we uh, continue to watch over uh, these areas and maintain safety uh, using our officers and officers from mutual aid agencies. We're very mindful of uh, the, uh, the traffic that's going in and out. 
Um, I do want to remind everyone that um, it is against the law to be in these evacuated areas. So do not go in there. Uh, we need to make sure it's safe for not only community members, but also our public safety who are going through uh, these areas to get to the fires. Uh, we uh, just ask the community again to follow us on social media. Uh, we ask them to uh, be mindful of everything going on. I even though things are opening up, it is still dangerous. Um, and that uh, to use patience and to be flexible and, uh, and to make sure that you're up to date on the changing conditions. Uh, just, uh, uh, I think one more thing. Uh, I've had a few reports of missing persons, uh, but we have located them. All right, we continue to monitor the CAL FIRE briefing on the glass fire. 42,000 acres, still no containment.